What is going on YouTube? Hey, back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P 500. We also have some very important things to discuss. As you guys know, today is Tuesday, the 13th, which means core CPI inflation, as well as just regular inflation data it will be released today at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At the time of recording this video, it's 7.45, so we have about 45 minutes before they drop that. So probably by the time you guys start watching this video, we'll have that inflation data. So what I'm telling you right now is going to be based solely on predictions where we think this market is going to be moving to. And pretty much, I truly believe that the entire market uh, has been hanging by a thread, waiting patiently for today's date, which will truly gauge whether or not we're going to be breaking bullish, seeing some big swings coming for the rest of the year uh, into the uh, starting off the new year, or we're going to see some pretty parabolic drops to the downside here. Uh, I'm kind of nervous. I have a lot of interesting things to talk about. We have to look at the S&P, which as you can see, has been steadily trading sideways for a very long time. Since November 24th, we've been flatlined out on the relative strength indicator at 50 on the RSI here. You can see we've been forming a symmetrical triangle, which is ready to burst today. This is pretty much it. The last day, a decision is going to have to be made pretty much by the end of today, which I think we will see. We have Ethereum here, which is trending inside once again, it's symmetrical or in its uh, sideways channel here. Also flatlined out since the 30th on its uh, relative strength indicator on the daily here you can see we've been ping-ponging above and below uh no no higher than 1300 and no lower than 1250 about a 50 dollar you know move to the upside and move to the downside here and we are going to see hopefully some sort of movement very soon hopefully by the end of today is where i really think we're going to see this and you can see bitcoin here which is just starting to peak above its major resistance as well could this be hinting that we are going to be breaking bullish and putting money in for a long position we won't know until we close this candle tonight because we've wicked above here before in the past to this level here but if we can close exactly where we are or even higher then we know to buy in because we expect to see a very prominent long position here i'm getting very excited i'm also very worried you can also see with the s p 500 on its four hour we are retesting this top resistance here i'm going to jump back to the daily here and you can see very clearly that yesterday we kind of are bouncing off this bottom support and heading up higher but as you guys can see here we've done this in the past so it's not surprising here last time we were near overbought we fell from retesting this purple band of resistance here and then we fell lower, bounced off bottom support, headed up for two days, and then we corrected downwards here. And you can see it's kind of the same thing happening right now. And honestly, if we really wanted to, to make this you know, even more obvious, we could pull this right to here and say, okay, maybe this is what we're dealing with, hitting this resistance up top, hitting this resistance right here. And here we are falling back down a moving average, just like we did a couple months ago in August here, and then pulled up higher and then completely dumped, pulled up higher and completely dumped. And as you guys can see, Actually, no, that's a lie. That that doesn't have any relevance. But right now, we are waiting for core CPI data to come out. Once we get this information here, I do have a prediction that we need to talk about here. Then we'll know where this market is going to be moving to. But it's either going to cause, I think today, like we saw a couple uh, weeks ago here, uh, back in when it was at the 13th, or I think it was the 10th here. You can see the 10th was right here. This is what was happening from the uh, from the CPI data we got for, what was it, October. We got it in November for October. Now we're in December for November. Uh, so pretty crazy but we could have some very major 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 movements off this prediction or off this inf information that we get today so i am excited um otherwise guys today's video is sponsored by bitscap a very cool cryptocurrency trading exchange that also offers uh crypto bots it's, you know literally bots that allow that pretty much do the trading for you which is interesting it's definitely interesting and i definitely think you should do your your research on this but it is offered and they do seem to be pretty profitable in regards to what they're doing here but um definitely do your research because it is it's new but you can see best crypto trading bots they offer comparisons and i have seen them be profitable uh but you can also link all your exchanges together which is super cool but more information about this will be later on in today's video with that being said smash the like button turn on post notifications subscribe and let's dive into today's episode so guys today's video is going to be a long one but um i just want to like start it off by talking about the uh core you know the cpi the inflation data here this is the most important then we'll talk about the cryptocurrencies because as you know we've been pretty much stagnant on most of these cryptos for a very long time but i just want to refresh with what we were dealing with a couple months ago here so i'm going to just zoom this in even closer so you guys can see what it is that we've been dealing with here and you can see here for the past the bottom graph in the red right here is a representation of core cpi so this is everything minus food and energy in the u.s that's what that is all the consumer price indexes for all the urban consumers minus um um, you know, like I said, food and energy, that's red here. And then the top is including food and energy here. So 
all the items you can see so since we peaked it seems like we've peaked in june june of 2022 for uh regular all the inflation we are at eight 0.9%, a high that we haven't seen in like 40 years. Since then, we've been slowly cooling off every month. So you can see this for June, we had 8.9. For July, it was 8.4. For August, 8.2. For September, we had 8.2 again. So not really much of a difference, but a small one. And then October, we had 7.7. .7. So we'll see what's expected now. Ideally, we want this to go even lower. And there's a good chance it is going to go lower. Uh, I'm hearing predictions at 7.3% is a possibility, but we'll see that. And then the problem is we've been heading down, yes, in uh, you know in regular inflation, but core inflation has been moving up, which is not a good sign. So since July, you can see we started to move up. July into August, we went from 5.9 to 6.3, a 0.4% increase. Then we went from 6.3 to 6.6, .6, which was a 0.3% increase. And then last month, we went from 6.6 .6 to 6.3 again, back down to where we were in, um, in August here. We're at the same, pretty much the same price right now. So we have to see where this goes but giving you guys that thought now moving on to what they're expecting this came out today uh or sorry yesterday at 5 a.m a day before and now we're pretty much 30 minutes out from when we get this information here but this is saying what to expect in the last consumer price inflation report of the year and what's ahead um, not only are we expecting to see uh, let's see. I believe they're also having the, uh, you know, federal fund rates are today as well. We get that today as well. I don't know when that when they're going to drop that. I believe it's at 8:30 a.m. today. They do plan on raising that. Federal fund is projected to trend to five percent in 2023 and 4.5 in 2024. So I do believe they are going to be increasing that very soon. So let's pay attention to that. And we'll talk about that and update you guys tomorrow here. But they're saying they're expecting to see core inflation seen rising. 0.3% uh, in November, up 6.1 from 2021. So up 6.1 in 2021. We're currently at 6.3. So they're saying we're going to go down from 6.3 to 6.1, but still up higher year over year is what they're expecting to see. So they're expecting both of them to drop, but year over year, they're expecting to see it rise. So who knows what's to come here? Up 6.1 from 2021, but to Core inflation seen rising 0.3 in November here, but uh, drop, I don't know. It's going to be interesting because this is saying up 6.1, but we're currently at 6.3. So it's going to go down to 6.1, but then it says it's up 0.3. So I don't know. This is a little confusing for me to try to figure out what they're referencing here to give two different examples here. But moving forward, they're saying the path to U.S. inflation in 2023 may have more surprises in store after a year in which consumers suffer the biggest cost of living hit in 40 years. Um, the CPI is seen rising 0.3 for a second month. Is that core or that's why I'm core inflation seen rising yeah, so they're saying in November, da, 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 excluding food and energy, CPI is seen rising 0.3 for a second month. That's what they're saying, a second month up that and 6.1 from a year ago. So from last month to now, we're, I don't know, because we are going down. I have the trend here and we are going down. We're not actually rising here, but maybe we're staying at 6.3. I don't know. It's it's a little too confusing here, but they're saying economists underestimated U.S. inflation in five of the last seven months here. Uh, and you can see the trajectory of inflation next year will depend on whether there's further tempering in core good prices, da, 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 so far and so forth. I don't want to read all of this here. So they're not giving us regular inflation data, what they're expecting here. Ex okay, expect, here we go. Near the middle of the year, expect CPI to fall from roughly 8% currently to 4%. This is next year. I don't know. I'm just giving you this information right now, but truly where I expect things to move to is both of these are going to be moving down. I believe they'll both move down. And I think what we're going to see is a reaction from the market and uh, things are going to rise today. Surprisingly, I believe things might rise and we could start to see a run to the upside here. But before I get into how this is going to affect the market, I do really quickly want to talk about uh, Bitsgap with you, though. I want to give a huge shout out to Bitsgap for sponsoring today's episode. As with all cryptocurrency exchanges, please do your own research and never invest anything you can't afford to lose. So guys, if you're looking to trade digital currencies from the comfort of your own home, you'll need to ensure that you are using a platform that comes jam-packed with tools, insights, and of course, competitive fees and commissions. With that said, seasoned traders will often make use of several exchanges to access specific markets and pairs or take advantage of arbitrage opportunities. Now, moving from exchange to exchange can, however, be both cumbersome and time-consuming. And with that in mind, Bitscap makes it possible for you to connect all your exchanges 
launches in one place. Now this comes with a plethora of plus points, such as being able to deploy advanced bots to trade simultaneously across multiple platforms. And as such, Bitscap has evolved to accommodate the many needs and expectations of cryptocurrency traders. Now Bitscap has carefully designed features that will enable you to quickly compare rates from heaps of digital currency markets, as well as trade and instantly switch between different exchanges. And what's more is that they keep track of your investments, offer basic and advanced order types, and even allow you to take advantage of the price differences between exchanges using arbitrage. Now, currently, Bitscap is integrated with 15 exchanges, including Binance, Kraken, Bitfinex, and many more, and traders have access to 10,000 plus cryptocurrency trading pairs and several technical indicators available to formulate your strategies. Now, the platform offers an optimized and intuitive interface for both beginners and seasoned traders, and the Bitscap trading bot is also a unique feature that lets you make the most of the highly volatile cryptocurrency marketplace. And it's also what Bitscap can be most known for. Now, the bots ensure that your investments are distributed proportionally within your chosen range, so you can make small but frequent profits on every market move. Now, firstly, grid trading bots allow you to generate profit from small price fluctuations as the market moves sideways. And the DCA trading bot invests in cryptocurrencies at multiple levels to buy at lower prices. Now, cryptocurrency trading is now mainstream, meaning that there is a growing demand for technically adept trading services. And if you're looking for a combination of advanced trading tools, technical indicators, and ease of use, Bitscap is worth considering. Overall, Bitscap states that they are extremely safe, secure, and have a fully encrypted platform to trade with. And the automated trading algorithm is clearly a standout benefit, which allows you to generate a steady flow of revenue with very little risk. Now, with that being said, huge shout out to Bitscap for sponsoring today's episode. And if you are interested in checking out this exchange or testing out their bots, I have linked them down in the description below. So guys, now to dive into the technical analysis here, when we get this information, I think we're going to react positively. If the markets do dip lower, which I believe they are going to do, both of them, I believe, are going to head lower. I went to the gas station today. Gas was $2.89 for regular here in Florida, $2.89. So things are definitely dropping here. Um, and I'm even seeing uh, the car market, used car market dropping too. So I do believe that we are going to get some positive news, but I also believe that we are going to see the Fed's raise rates yet again um, up a little bit more. I don't know where we currently are. The Fed fund rate, let's see, federal fund rate rate. Fred is currently sitting at, um, we are currently at it says 3.78. So I mean, they're, they were expecting it to move up to five, but I think they're going to do another quarter, maybe a quarter rate hike, and we'll move up to maybe four right now. And we'll go from there here. But moving forward now into this cryptocurrencies and into this market here, I believe the S&P is going to pop, possibly react positively. Again, I know I'm all over that place. I, that's literally how this market is going to be. Nobody's going to know for sure until we get that information in 30 minutes here. But if we come out how I'm expecting, which is going to be lower, then I do expect to see the S&P kind of swing back up. Hopefully we don't go much higher than this resistance here and we kind of start trading sideways from now on moving forward here. But there's a lot still riding on the fact that we could be dropping lower. I don't know. There's a lot of iffy iffy. We're not going to know until tonight which way we're going to be buying in. The XRP prices here is 50-50 as well at this point. I, I'm more bearish than bullish here. But um, you can see we're flatlined out now completely on the RSI. We've been like this for a long time. We are going to get that result probably today. If we close the weekly above this resistance, or even if we close the daily, we could take a little leap of faith here, buy in for an expectation of a break to the upside here, which a lot of people are riding on and waiting for. But if we don't and we see a correction, maybe inflation rises here, then we are going to see a pretty substantial drop. We're not going to know until a little bit later today. Same thing with Ethereum. If Ethereum gets positive news, if, if the S&P 500, starts to drop. If we see the S&P 500 start to get some negative news, we'll see Ethereum and Bitcoin fall down with it. If not, do expect to see a run. And we'll know tonight whether or not we'll be buying in long or buying in short. I know I'm all over the place, but it's hard to do predictions on something that hasn't come yet with information on predictions. So I'm making a prediction on a prediction about something that hasn't happened yet uh, is, is a little all over the place right now. But, um, you know, that was basing off that weird Bloomberg thing that's saying core inflation is rising by 0.3 percent but we're going to be at 6.1 that's what they're expecting it to be at so i don't know because that's not what the charts are actually at um but that's pretty much it. Otherwise, definitely make sure to check out Bitsgap. Uh, link is down in the description if you haven't checked them out already. Make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.